Hello gang, I thought I would um, take some time to read uh, The Crane Girl to you. This is written by Curtis Manley. Uh, it's actually adapted by him. Uh, the illustrations on here are really pretty, so I wanted to give you hopefully an opportunity to see uh, the illustrations as I read aloud to you. This is our last book, uh, as we've talked about empathy uh, in the series of books that we've had actually since school started. This is our last one. Uh, and I think you'll enjoy it. So it's The Crane Girl. I'm going to do my best to make it so that you can see the illustrations as I read. Um, Yasuhira dropped his armload of firewood to follow the sound across the sharp buckwheat stubble of the landlord's field. He almost stepped on the crane, nearly visible where it lay in the snow. A trap held one foot but the crane looked unharmed. As Yasuhiro knelt, the bird closed its eyes and shuddered. Yasuhiro clicked his tongue to calm the bird. I'm here, I'm not here to hurt you. There's also little pieces down here at the bottom that the author includes. It's kind of a summary or a side thought. This one says, cold hard trap, he sets me free with warm hands. So by using the clue, he sets me free, this is the thought of the crane in the story. When the bird, let's see here. When the bird stood up, it was as tall as Yasuhiro. He stroked the soft feathers on its long neck with his fingertips, and the bird gently pressed the red top of its head against Yasuhiro's face. And again, the crane's head against my cheek. How warm it was. This one's in green. Makes me think it's Yasuhiro's thought that's there. The crane suddenly turned away, began running, and took flight over the wintry hills. Yasuhiro watched until the bird was a pale speck against the dark sky. Then he picked up the firewood his father had sent him and hurried home. The next night, someone knocked on the door. The next night, someone knocked on the door. Yasuhiro opened it and found a girl standing there, pale and shivering, tears frozen on her cheeks. Please, she said, bowing. I have no home and nothing to eat. May I stay here with you? I will help with chores. I won't be any trouble. Yasuhiro led her to the warmth of the hearth. Father will decide whether you can stay. Yasuhiro's father... Yasuhiro's father, Ryota, got up and bowed. We are not rich like others in town, but you are welcome here as long as you can work hard. If you are lazy or steal from me, you cannot stay. Do you agree to that? Yes, sir, the girl said and bowed again. Thank you. You may call me Hiroko. Yasuhiro and Hiroko became friends. They shared their choice, choice and their, spent their time together. Springtime rain, I teach her games everyone else already knows. Can you see the game that he's showing her? Each morning, Ryota walked to town. He walked to town to looking for work, unloading boats or carrying heavy baskets. He returned in the evening, usually with a fish or noodles. But when he couldn't find work, he came home with only his sadness, crying the name of Yasuhiro's mother. My mother died when I was young, Yasuhiro whispered to, to Hiroko. One of those nights, wait a minute, <laughs> hold on. Mother died when I was young, Yasuhiro whispered to Hiroko one of those nights. Father says she wove the finest kimono silk in the whole island. We still have her loom and thread, but father said to sell all the fabric she made, except for my scarf. Ah, oh, Yasu, it's so beautiful, Hiroko said, as she stroked the soft fabric. His mother love, his mother's love, threads of color flowing, flowing in the weave. The next day, Hiroko bowed to Ryota. If you please, if you would please, um, Ryota san, I will weave a silk for you. I will bring a good price in the market. I have but one request. Neither you know 
Yasuhiro must open the door or look at me while I am weaving. No matter how long I might take, do you agree to that? Yasuhiro and Ryota nodded and said yes. Then I will weave for you. She took the bowl of rice and bean sprouts that Yasuhiro offered and she closed the door. Uh, again, the thought, my wife's loom pounding of my own heart behind the door. The loom sounded all that night and the next day, after only after dinner did it fall silent. When Hiroku finally opened the door, she was carrying a bolt of cloth as light as a summer breeze. White silk speckled with black tracks of winter birds. So you can see the pattern on the silk. The merchant bought the silk for as much gold as Ryota would earn in five months. Heavy sacks of coins, why should I beg for work? Now Ryota often slept late. By the time he walked to the village, there was no work left. Instead, he sat with the merchants in the warm sun, eating and drinking all afternoon. The gold was gone in just three months. So again, so again, Hiroko closed the door to weave, taking with her a bowl of tofu and ginger that Yasuhiro had prepared for her. This time, the girl spent two full days with the loom. The fabric was even finer than before, weightless silk with trembling hands and tired eyes. A merchant paid so much, well, if you can't tell, that's the noon whistle on Sunday. The merchant paid so much that Ryota stopped even trying to look for work. He went to town only to sit by the docks with the merchants and boast of the fine silk that he could weave for them. Cup by cup, his father shout, swallows all the money. In the few months, all the gold was spent again. More cloth, demanded Ryota. Hiroko looked down at the floor. I am still so weak, sir. Next month, I will weave more. You will do it now, insisted Ryota. And before Yasuhiro could stop him, Ryota pushed the girl into the room and slid the door shut. Yasuhiro looked at the door and remembered his promise to Hiroko never to open it. Knock of her loom, I put down the chopsticks and stare at my rice. The day passed and then another. The loom's rhythm seemed slower with each passing hour. Ryota paced back and forth. Three days, how those merchants must laugh at me. Finally, the loom fell quiet. Are you done with the cloth? Ryota asked and slid the door open. He cried out and fell onto the floor. Yasuhira rushed towards his father but stopped and stared. Through the open door, he saw a long, thin neck and feathers flecked with blood. And then a great wing slammed the door shut. Ryota ran past Yasuhiro and stumbled outside into the darkness. Even the moon gone, all my good luck lost again. When Hiroto finally came out, her face was pale. Her eyes were red from crying. Yasu, here's the silk for your father. Once he sells it, he need not bear any burdens for many months. I'm sorry about father, Yasuhiro said, gazing down at the fabric. Yasuhiro pressed her head against him. The last time I will touch his cheek, cold tears. Yasuhiro thought of what he'd seen through the open door and touched um, Hiroko's neck. Why did you pluck your own feathers for the cloth? You saved my life when I was, you saved my life when I was caught in the trap, said the girl. You were so gentle and kind. I wanted to be with you. Hiroko's feathers, her love for me, threaded through the silk. Hiroko pulled away from him, but I can stay here no longer. She hurried outside and within three steps, 
changed back into a crane and flew away. Everything lost. How could he ever love a crane? Yasuhiro ran and ran, calling after her and sobbing. When she was just a dark speck in the dawn sky, he could run no more. He must have fallen asleep, for suddenly Hiroko was bending over him. Yasu, come home. You will freeze here in this snow. I won't go back, said Yasuhiro. Take me with you. Hiroko shook her head. Our life is too different. It is a hard life. You won't make it. I will make it. I will like it because I will be with you. Then follow me, she began running and flapping her wings hard. But I don't have... But he did. He did have wings. Matching their heart baits, my heart soars. Together they flew low over the hills and along the river to the marshes at the edge of the sea. Her people clacked their beaks in welcome and danced for them. Yasuhiro and Hiroko stayed together all the rest of their long lives and raised many crane children one by one by one. Spring sun, our chick's feathers wet from the egg. How lucky we are all to be cranes. I wanted to read this um, little piece down here at the bottom to you. It says, the red-crowned crane is the second rarest species of crane. Fewer than 3,000 of them remain in the wild. Many round-crowned cranes spend their summers in northeastern China and Siberia and then migrate to warmer areas for winter. One group of the cranes, however, lives year-long in the Japanese island of Hokkaido. Laws now protect these birds and the land they live on, and food is put out for them in the winter marshes. For hundreds of years, Japanese people have considered a crane a symbol of happiness and long life. Songs, poems, and stories about the crane are popular, and wedding kimonos are often sewn from fabric woven with crane designs. So that's the story of the crane girl. <laughs>